Let me turn to another topic, and that is the regulation of salmon farms. The controversy that surrounded salmon farms when my inquiry began continues. I really want to comment on two aspects, but my report has a very detailed discussion of this topic. I want to talk about the role of DFO in promoting salmon farming and the risks that salmon farms pose to wild stocks. Given DFO's paramount regulatory objective to conserve wild fish, it faces a challenge in relation to net pen salmon farming along the BC coast. DFO's current role in relation to salmon farming is broader than the protection of wild stocks. It extends to promotion of the salmon farming industry and farm salmon as a product. In my respectful view, when DFO has simultaneous mandates to conserve wild stocks and promote the salmon farming industry, there are circumstances in which it may find itself in a conflict of interest because of divided loyalties for the reasons I set out in detail in my report. Thus, I recommended in my report that promotion of salmon farming should be transferred to a different part of the executive branch. Turning to the issues surrounding the risks that salmon farms may pose to wild fish, I have reached several findings and conclusions in my report. Briefly, they are as follows. First, Fraser River sockeye face some likelihood of harm from diseases and pathogens on salmon farms, but based on the evidence before me, I cannot quantify the likelihood of harm. In the absence of further research, scientists are left with plausible hypotheses and mechanisms whereby salmon farms may be causing disease in wild fish. Secondly, if such harm does in fact occur, the harm posed to Fraser River sockeye is of a serious or irreversible nature. I accept the evidence that a devastating disease could sweep through a wild population, killing large numbers of wild fish without scientists being aware of it. Third, I'm satisfied from everything I heard in the evidence, including public submissions and presentations at public forums, that British Columbians will not tolerate more than a minimal risk of serious harm to Fraser River sockeye from salmon farms. Fourth, I was not able to determine from the evidence whether current measures such as siting criteria and fish health management plans ensure that the risk of serious harm from disease and pathogen transfer is a minimal one. Thus, I found that there are several steps that DFO can and should take to address this potential serious harm to wild sockeye stocks. First, let me say a word about the siting of salmon farms. Currently, salmon farms are permitted in the narrow passages along the smolt out migration route, particularly through the Discovery Islands, where the migrating wild smolts come into close contact with salmon farms. I heard evidence that this close contact increases the potential for the transmission of disease to wild stocks. I have recommended that DFO revise its siting criteria to account for Fraser River sockeye migration routes and for the most up-to-date knowledge about the risks associated with farms. I found that if existing salmon farms do not comply with revised siting criteria, they should be promptly removed or relocated. In short, DFO should seek to approve only the best sites to avoid negative impact on wild stocks rather than the best sites to produce farm salmon. DFO's first priority must be the health of the wild stocks. Second, DFO needs to take steps to minimize the scientific uncertainty about salmon farms. I accept the evidence that scientists need to continue to collect regulatory fish health data until 20, 2020 before they can use it to confidently identify or rule out relationships between salmon farms and wild stocks. In addition to collecting regulatory data, DFO needs to research the effects of diseases and pathogens from salmon farms on wild sockeye. As well, little is known about the cumulative effects on sockeye of having multiple salmon farms sited on their migration route. In recommendation 68 of my report, I identify the specific types of research that DFO should undertake. Third, according to the precautionary principle to which Canada and DFO are fully committed, mitigation measures should, be not, should not be delayed in the absence of scientific certainty. In my view, salmon farms should not be permitted to operate unless it is clear that they pose no more than a minimal risk to Fraser River sockeye salmon. For these reasons, I recommended that first, production at salmon farms in the Discovery Islands be immediately capped at current levels. Second, on September 30, 2020, in consideration of research recommended in my report, the Minister of Fisheries and Oceans prohibit net pen salmon farms in the Discovery Islands 
unless the minister is satisfied that such farms pose at most a minimal risk of serious harm to the health of Fraser River Sockeye. And third, if at any time between now and September 2020, the results of any research cause the minister to determine that salmon farms in the Discovery Islands pose more than a minimal risk to Fraser River Sockeye, the minister prohibit their operation immediately.